the New York football giants are going to be featured on hard knocks in what I believe is a first for the hard knocks series. They are doing an off season hard knocks. So they historically do the training camp hard knocks that we're all familiar with tried and true formula. And then they have, they do the mid season or in season hard knocks, which I, I did watch the dolphins one from last year. And I thought it was, it was pretty awesome. I mean, Mike McDaniels is such a fucking character, dude. And I would love to strap up a lot of the players into a lie detector test and just feed them questions. Be like, so what do you think of this dude? <laughs> Hit him up with some true serum. Yeah, no, he's a funny dude. Smart guy. I just think uh, he can come across sometimes as not being his true genuine self. But maybe that just is him. You know, because you look back at some of his stints with some of, the, you know, they have historical archive footage from him with the, all of his other previous positions. And it's like he's just different. But I guess that's because he was an alcoholic and now he's completely clean and sober. Something to chew on. Anyway, this is the first time Hard Knocks will document the NFL offseason and the first time the show will feature the Giants since the series debut in 2001. I cannot believe that it's been around since 2001. Holy shit. Um, and the Giants have never been featured, which I know that probably some older hard-headed fans would be like, it's just a distraction. But I'm very curious. I would love to see it. and. To be honest, and I don't know if this is a hot take, I think this is going to be the most interesting or has the potential to be the most interesting of the three. I think the offseason could be way more interesting than training camp, which is just have become such a fucking joke. Um, and then the in-season, I mean, the Dolphins in-season was cool, but I think the previous one was like the Colts when they had Carson Wentz and the Cardinals when they were shit in the bed, I believe. Might have been J.J. Watts last season. Or no, 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 wrong about that. To oh, was it 2015? Oh, I think they might have gone to the playoffs that year. Anyway, name the last in season hard knocks besides the Dolphins that you really enjoyed. Man, you know it's tough. This off season was, I mean, not it was a lot of upheaval for the Giants. So I think it's going to be entertaining as shit. You have the Saquon Barkley drama. You have the Wink Martindale drama. You have the draft. Um. You have free agency. You have a lot of turnover on the coaching staff. Um, it's going to do. I mean, it, 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 this says it's going to document the period from January until July. So the moment that the season ended after that Eagles game, my guess is that the camera crews were allowed to film everything, NFL scouting combine, mini camps. So it's going to be five parts, which is, I mean, that's a lot. That's. I mean, you're fitting like six, seven months into five episodes. I mean, they're going to be, they have to be, I mean, I don't know how they're going to pull that off, but it's going to be jam-packed. It's going to de debut July 2nd at 9 p.m. Eastern on HBO with new episodes de debuting subsequent Tuesdays through July 30th. And Lieb Schreiber, noted Jets fan, is going to narrate. But yeah, there's a lot of storylines to think about with this series. You know, they... We fired uh, special teams coordinator Thomas McGahey. We parted ways with D.C. Wink Martindale, uh, mostly because we also fired uh, his boys, outside linebackers coach Drew Wilkins and his brother defensive assistant Kevin Wilkins. We hired, we fired offensive line coach Bobby Johnson. We hired Carmen Brasillo. Um, we hired Shane Bowen. Uh, we hired another special teams guy whom I'm forgetting. Um, you know, the are we going to see any kind of contract negotiations or or discussions or talks about you know what to do with pending free agent and pending free agents Barkley and Xavier McKinney, um, and then the mega trade for Brian Burns. How did that all How did that all roll out and pan out and go down? You know, if Joe Shane is not friends with um, Dan Morgan, does that happen? Maybe not. Probably not. So, and you know, selecting Malik Neighbors. And, uh, you know, all these reports saying that they were trying to trade up. Or is that, like, I'm very curious to see what is going to, because they can't say unprecedented, exclusive, insider access, no holds barred, blah, blah, blah. No, dude. I feel like teams have, must have some kind of say into what gets out there and what is, uh, what is ultimately aired and ends up in the final cut. I have to think that. So, like, if they... I say that to say this, if there were com conversations about trading up in the draft, would they want that out? Like, 
Daniel Jones probably not going to watch it, but still, it's just going to add fuel to the fire because it's like right now it's just reports. We reportedly tried to trade up. It hasn't really been confirmed by anyone, but then you put it out on HBO. Everyone starts talking about it. It's like, this is confirmed. They want to move on from Daniel Jones. And then, uh, you know, Daniel has to, um, whether he try, I mean, he can do his best to ignore it and, and distract himself and, and, and shut out the noise. But that's going to be real t- difficult. I don't know that anyone could do that. You really have to just go completely off the grid. And then anyone that kind of <laughs> tries to talk to you about it, like, hey, Daniel, have you seen that? Nope, I haven't seen anything. I don't watch TV. I don't have a TV. What is a TV? Um, so yeah, that should be real, a real fun show, possibly more entertaining than the actual season itself. <laughs> and maybe we'll get a better look at, uh, Joe Shane and Brian Dable, uncensored, unfiltered, raw. I mean, we, Dable to me is kind of hard to wrap my head around. It's like he, he came in and was so buddy, buddy with like Shep and Blake Martinez, I think, uh, and just guys that he he knew he was like, you know, we're cutting your ass, <laughs> or I'm not gonna play you. But yet, you know, dapping him up and whatnot, it's just like it seemed like, oh, this guy's cool. Like, and he's got. It seems like the players are into it, and they respect them, and they like them. And then you see him just like bitching out coaches and players alike, and you're like, all right, this is this act is might be grading on some people. And my he his time might be uh wearing thin. His act might be wearing thin on some people, but you get to see another level, another layer to him. Um, because man, there's there are a lot of like press conferences and whatnot. And I know that's not how you should measure a coach at all. I mean, look at, at some of the greatest, best coaches in the world. They had like the worst p- conferences, press conferences. But he just looks so fucking uncomfortable in those things. Where it's just like he's just you can see him just like shaking every five seconds in his seat um he just he must hate that and i guess that's what you should like about a a head coach is like i don't want to be here get me the fuck out of here i want to i want to be looking at football tape so but uh yeah that and i wonder if they try to edit it to make saquon look like the bad guy the villain i mean you know i i don't think a lot of i don't think pretty much anyone thought we were going to re-sign xavier mckinney i mean i know there were some a lot of stands out there that love x man and we're like, we have to resign him. We can't let him walk. He's all pro, pro, blah, 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 blah. But um, I don't, I don't, I don't foresee or imagine that conversation going very far or lasting very long. I think it's like they, the agent calls, or they call the agent, and they're like, so, uh, what, what is he looking for? And they said, and the agent says the number, and they're like, well, thanks for playing, and hung up. 